Welcome back, everybody, to episode 41 of the Amateur Hour Podcast, the most mediocre podcast, bringing you the most mediocre entertainment every single week. Matthew, well, how's your week, week been? It's been a week. It's been hot. It's heating up out here, actually. Oh, it is. Dude, it's actually heating up. Oh, my yeah. God. Uh, yeah. you, you, do you, still have not, you, you still don't have AC, right? I don't think. I don't use my AC. I think it can work. Uh, I just haven't tried it. Just, oh, okay. I'm afraid my car's going to blow up. Oh, okay. Yeah. But no, so I don't have AC. Last summer, I didn't have an AC either. Yeah. And we were going through the struggles of having to wear two t-shirts yeah. anywhere we were going out. Yeah. Because you needed one shirt for the car yep. and one shirt for the actual place you were going for. I was putting a towel on my seat oh. just to not get my seat like wet and sweaty because it was that bad. Your, your swamp ass? No, my back. Swamp oh, back. Swamp back. Yeah, swamp back. That translates to ass. It, it does, but it's not the same. What do you mean? Is back sweat different than ass sweat? Yes, because <laughs> the, because it doesn't grow from the ass. Mm. It's, it's the it's, back. Yeah. It's a little cleaner. Yeah. My back is nice and smooth. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like how a mountain just drips down yeah, into yeah, the river. But, it's like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like muddy mountain water mm-hmm. versus like Not so much Icelandic spring water. Spring water yeah. mountain. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to lick sweat off my back, it's cleaner yeah. than the sweat off my ass. <laughs> how was your week, man? It's good, man. Hot. It's been fucking hot. Yeah. It's been fucking hot. It's uh but it's been good. It's been good. We've had um we've had some some good days. Work was alright. Uh, productive crackhead stuff, you know, normal things. I got attacked by a bird. At work yesterday. I don't know if I want to ask any further questions. Got attacked by a bird. I'll show you later. What kind of bird? Um, pigeon. Ooh. Daddy pigeon. Daddy? There's a bird on like one of the pillars that's outside, and mm-hmm. they have a nest. Mm. And every day I walk by it, and I'll put music up oh. so it can list so the babies can know what, what jams are. Mm-hmm. And then today, that day, I went and I showed them the music. I'm going to turn them into parrots. And then the, the dad was like, you know, he's, pick, he's picking at his fur, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, and then he sees me. And then we're just staring at each other. Like, I'm just looking up. Mm-hmm. And then he's looking down. Mm-hmm. And then he walks to the edge. He literally walks to the edge. So he's like... Yeah. And his feet get on the edge. And we're just staring at each other for another couple seconds. Mm-hmm. And then I just see him go and dive at me. He literally dove at my fucking head. Yo, like a hawk? Yes. Yes. That's crazy. I had to duck. Like, and some guests saw. I ducked. He ducked. And he goosed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I don't know. But I got attacked by a bird. So that was cool. Speaking of pigeons, one little just quick side question. What's up? Do, do they pee? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. I, I would like to believe everything pees. But have you seen a bird pee? <sighs> we 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 we, we we're, see shit. We're, yeah. We're all familiar with bird shit. Is there pee in their shit? Maybe that's why it's always watery. Do you do do you think it all can just same funnel? Yeah. Is that yeah. possible? Yeah. Why can't we do that? It saves just, so much time. Yeah, but would you want to? Where would you'd pee through your ass at that point? Well, yeah, I do that. You you did that two weeks ago. That's different. I was sick. Mm. What if that I was, was all I don't the think time? I can do it all the time. No. Because what if you let out a fart and all of a sudden it's pee, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're just like dripping down your pants? Would that be a norm though? So that's you're like, what a queef is, Dave, right? Dave, you're peeing again. He's like, huh? Oh. Shit. Oh shit. And it's just like and then he goes <laughs> and then he goes away. <laughs> then he knows and that. Then he knows that not you because he's fucking pissed. I don't fucking know. No, I don't know. Anyway, uh, pigeons aside, how was how was your week? My week was eventful, Matthew. Let me let me fill you up on something that Hey, hey don't fill me up. Hey, hey, no, no, let me hey, fill you up. Hey, let, I'm let, podcasting let, here. Let let, let let me fill me in. Let, fill, fill you in with not up. something. I, I have a bad tendency of saying up all the time. A, cu- a couple of weeks ago, there was a work situation that happened oh, at, yeah. at, at my work. I'm not going to get too much into detail, but basically, there was some... Uh, Is this the one I'm aware of? Yes. Okay. Yes. So there was a whole investigation oh. that I was under. Oh, yeah. How right? So this week was the conclusion to said investigation, Matthew. Oh, uh, shit. And I have some bit of tea for you. Let me see you push a T. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you can't do that while drinking tea, bro. I, you, knew, you, you, I knew that was going to get you. You can't tea I a man while you're drinking I, tea. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I just wanted to see you push it. My fault. <laughs> well, I'm going to push myself over the edge and nosedive. Yeah, yeah, you're going to nosedive at me right now. But no, so basically, I get a phone call right? at work. You know, do it over the line. It says, hey, 
So about that whole thing that's going on, we have a conclusion to fill you up with, in in with it. You know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. He's like the conclusion is that there is no conclusion. Okay. Because uh, without getting too much into detail, what was said that led to the investigation could not be proven because it basically didn't happen. It was false. It was false statements from the start. Yep. And basically, it led to nowhere. But unfortunately, I had a, had a convert like a whole sit down meeting with both of my superiors. And that was a very interesting experience. How to how to go through all, like all the documentation and everything. It's just, it's just weird, bro. So you're not in trouble. I'm not in trouble Good. because nothing happened. Yeah, because yeah. Good yeah. so for you for for being fucking normal. For being, I, guess, I guess no, but but it's in those instances where like if people are like shitty and stuff, that's where it comes out. Yeah, that's where you. Yeah. But no, that that was that was very that was very uh, eventful because bro, for like the last couple of weeks, that shit has been like eating me up. I was like, yeah, it's bothering you. Am I gonna and have a fucking job? Yeah. Or what's you know what's gonna happen and stuff? But no, it's it's you know it's a weight off my shoulders. That was a big one. Um, I almost hit an old lady. Oh, not, ten points. Not willingly. Oh yeah, she Five just points. started walking. Oh, shit. Surprisingly fast for an elder. Yeah, and nah, they, some can move. Yeah, but how in your car? <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! I wasn't just walking at. That's what I'm saying. Know, I thought you were, I thought you were swinging. I thought you were swinging at it. Mm, I was swinging at a bird and I almost hit the elder. The That's crazy. What if that bird hit me though? It didn't. No. What if it did? What's the worst that can happen? Poke my eye out. Imagine I don't have an eye. Mm. Which one? Right or left? If I, if I had to lose one. Yeah. Am I right? Could you see the same without one eye? Yeah. You know, I can't really squint. Am I doing it? You can't wink? No, we've discussed this before. I can't close one eye and keep one eye open. Try it again. No, like, but do it for real this time. Um, uh, <laughs> no, like, actually do it, though. Matt, I'm sure this is me trying. No, I know, but, like, actually do it. Uh, okay, just, okay. Just, just look straight at the camera. Okay. And then just close one eye. Which eye do you want me to close? Whichever one's dominant or easier to control. You can't do it at all. That's okay, that. so close both eyes. Now just open one. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can't I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Anyways, weeks aside, Matthew. Right. I I, have, I actually actually no, before we move on, I have a funny thing to tell you. Okay. A couple of days ago, I was running late for work because mm-hmm. I slept through my alarm. Ugh. That happens all the time. It's un- the worst. Un- unfortunately, especially because I work why, so I work so early in the morning. That's why I said like fifteen. I slept at about 15. Damn. Yeah. That's the worst. Yes. So, I'm running late. Don't have time to shower, but I have time to freshen up just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Go to the thing, put my head in there, you know, just wash up a little bit, you know. Get the but, spots. Yeah, get the spots and everything. I forget a crucial, crucial area because the heat is picking up. Ugh. Go to work, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm literally seconds away from being late. Yeah. My workplace is cracking down on me being late, too. So you know, and you're on the you're right at this point. And, I'm sure. and, and at, at this, this point, point yeah. you know, yeah, going about my day, just working, working. I go up to get something from the shelf, and I'm like, "Is that uh, Linda again? Uh, the fuck with the- oh shit!" And it's me, it's me. Thankfully, at this point, I only have like um, 20 minutes left of my shift. Ah, uh, so you know, the rest of my shift, just get some, just get some fucking cinnamon. And just, you know, I mean, what's the worst? You, I, I'd rather smell like something than than bo. Not a bad idea. Or you should have went to the restroom, got some soap. At least, at least give yourself another thirty minutes of uh, freshness. You know. I think of that, I've been there before, but we all been there. We've all yeah. been there. You know. Are those your solutions to to not having bo? Because I this hasn't happened to me since high school. Um, th- I mean, okay, so those those things I don't I haven't specifically used cinnamon, but <laughs> those things are solutions but now that's why i i live outside like or i live inside my backpack because i have lotion deodorant uh cologne to like uh mouthwash toothbrush like or those little mini brushes um i have things just in case because there have been times where i fucked up and i'm like i didn't brush my teeth before i left i get to work and i'm like got a toothbrush in my bag got some mouthwash bah, bah, bah. so here's the thing at this point in my life yeah i am not conditioned to Cause you do a very good job at this. Yes. You take your backpack everywhere. Mm-hmm. I don't do that anymore. There was a couple of years before that I used to do that, yeah. and now I cannot get myself to do that anymore. 
And then what ha- ends up happening is I leave everything in my car. But that only works in Phoenix in the fucking winter time because the last time I left the deodorant in my car, Melted. I had to scrub deodorant off of my seat. Yeah, it melts. It's so gross. It was, it was, I had just bought in it. Six dollar fucking deodorant. Oh yeah, they're expensive. Speaking of that though, tell me why so fucking random that you're talking about deodorant. I had I so I have certain deodorants that I use. Welcome back to the Amateur Hour podcast, guys. Where we talk about fucking deodorant. I just want I just want to say this is a part of my week. This no, is a part no, of my yeah, week. Yeah, this is yeah, part yeah. of my week. It's fine. You know, tell me what the people want to see. I I bought a specific <laughs> deodorant and I it was it smelled bomb and I'm like dang like I love how it smells. I was like what why brand? Is, uh, Old Spice. Which one? The, I don't, I have it in there. It's like the it, it, ocean something. Ooh, I used the one with the wolf on it. Oh, uh, okay, cool. So. It smells super good. Yeah, so the one I got, it smells nice, right? It's like some type of ocean breeze shit. Yeah. And I'm like, and it's always been there. It's not like new. But mm-hmm. I, and I was like, I, I do this every time, like every three, four months. I always forget. I, I go through the same cycle. I bought it. I smelled it. I was like, or I smelled it. I bought it. And I was like, damn, this is dope. Using it for a couple of days. I'm, I'm cool. I think like a week and a half go by and I'm just feeling like a little uncomfortable. So I get home, shower, and then I like look, and I'm having a fucking reaction to the to the deodorant. Like it's like it's just it's just like the bumps and the rash on both. And I'm like, oh, are you fucking serious? So I so one day I had like one full day of work, I had like really bad fucking um, a reaction to it. It yeah. sucked. took a, took a couple of days to put rubbing alcohol. Yeah, I uh, I had some like antibacterial. Um, cream that i put on there and i i still had to use some deodorant so i so i got a different deodorant that i know i'm not allergic to just little dabs to was it get the was smell. it dry what was it the dry one do you yeah. use dry yeah i don't use dry for the same reason yeah it makes it makes i have sensitive skin yeah i don't know it, it's just the shit they're putting in there but yeah no it's funny that you say that because i had a reaction to it i was like every time i have a reaction to something i think i'm dying so yeah i'm at that stage now where i'm mm-hmm. like this this is it. Mm-hmm. My armpits. I'm, I'm going out. I'm, I'm going out. So yes, that. So the solution to those issues, I usually just always have my bag on me, or but I would have want. I went and would. I would have went periodically to wash my pits in the bathroom. No, but that was that was a scary moment because I haven't been there since I was a teenager. What worries me more about that is, and I don't know. I'm not saying this for you, but I'm just saying, like in your situation, you you you, you noticed it pretty late into your shift. Did anyone else notice it earlier? That's my biggest fear: is me uh, be, me why, being the why, guy. Why would you say that? Uh, why yeah, why, why would you say that? that? Why, why would you say that? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put that. in the Wow, mix. bro. Yeah, I didn't mean to put that in the mix. That's crazy. That <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We're we're out, right? Yeah, we're out. Uh-huh. I'm having a good time. Okay, we stumbled upon a karaoke bar. Okay, we're in there. Yeah, we're singing. This has all happened. Three, three, three songs in. Okay. Well, you know, we're doing a duet. Uh-huh. And then you lean over because we're hugging and, and stuff. Smelly. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, God, what the fuck? Yeah. Linda's not in here. And it smells like straight. Straight B.O. Straight onion sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like two I, onions I, fucking. Yeah. That's what it smells like. Two onions hate fucking. Yeah. Right. Mm. Do you look over and tell me? Yeah, of course. Straight to my face. Uh, How would you do it? How, okay. We're, we're here, play it out. I'm a believer. Like. Cause I'm a believer. I'm ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's how I do it. That's how I do it. That's how I <laughs> If I ever just scream yeah, in yeah. public, that just I'm, I'm like, is. oh shit. <laughs> where's the deodorant? Where's the deodorant? Where's the soap? Where's the soap? <laughs> no, my bad. I would just tell you. I'd just be like, hey bro, getting a little pity. <laughs> My backpack's in the car. <laughs> my bag, my bag. My bag. <laughs> and I go get my bag, you know? That's crazy. So, yeah, no, I don't know. It, it's embarrassing. You never want to... I don't want to put this in the mix, but I already did. My biggest worry is being... The, everyone has always had a, co- a smelly co-worker. So or I, just a smelly friend at some point. And I, but co-worker's worse because a friend, you can accept your friend. If you... if like some, I've had homies that like didn't put deodorant on today. You stink, yeah, whatever. Like We're, we're guys. Get over it. Like As long as it's not a reoccurring thing, it happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially if we're playing basketball like sports players are used to it right motherfuckers stink it's just a part of like oh, being yeah. a guy but it's one thing to be at work or a function like a party nobody wants to be at the party next to the stinky guy party's I mean, different work nobody really cares I think but I feel like it's worse at work because you're, these, these are people like your peers and then you don't I just you don't want to be the smelly guy you don't want them to be like oh Angel's coming in he probably stinks today well see it goes back to the re- reoccurring thing you no, know, if, if 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 you come in one day, oh yeah, you know, no one's you, gonna remember. You know, and you're you're like, oh god, Angel, you. I'm like, oh, you know, I might be, I might want to die that one day. Yeah, but then, then, yeah, no one's gonna remember you. You know, but then I'm gonna get the new the new old spice, the little pack. Mm-hmm. Get the up, get a ration next day, and then come in smelling fresh. You know. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I get you. I don't know. I, I just I, I be because I've been there. That's why I got my backpack now. No, exactly. And I and I used to be the exact same way in high school when I carried my backpack twenty four seven. I had, again, I, I had deodorant in there. Right. I had little. I, I had a toothbrush in the little case. I had a side toothpaste, mm-hmm. and then you know you know those Listerine strips. Yeah. Little thing used to carry those too. Yeah. I, I got had, I got Tic Tacs in my. Yeah, my bag, you know? I had the whole spiel. I had snacks even too. Mm-hmm. I, I was I was just that guy. Yeah, I even got I got my inhaler. Yeah, I had. You didn't uh, even have asthma. You just I don't even have asthma. I just find them. F- yeah. I just I just take people's inhalers. Like, hey, can I? Yeah, just Give run me off. It's not even my prescription. <laughs> you you know? start running because they can't. Yeah, and then I'm gonna need the inhaler. I just, <laughs> you know, get high. Take that, that bitch. <laughs> yeah. So no, I I get it. I get it. So Matthew, coming off of the Venom trailer. The link right here if you guys want to go watch it. Uh, I actually have a couple of tidbits that I want to go a little bit more into detail that really wasn't going to fit the video. So what if I were to tell you, Matthew, oh. that there is a substance, IRL, real life, okay, that holds the same properties but also has been created for space just like a certain symbiote? Let me introduce you to Think Mud. Okay. Now, Think Mud, crazy name, right? A little bit. Is a slime. Like putty-like material that has been mixed with electri- electric infused magnets. Although the slime like moves and takes shape via the control of magnets. Okay. Now that sounds pretty impressive, right? Yeah. M- m- just sounds interesting. It, it's almost it, it's almost alien-like the way it moves. Mm-hmm. You know the way it like uh, literally the way you see the symbiote reach when it's gonna go its host. It's the same thing. But l- 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 let me let me just like be honest with you. It's just like glorified. Um, visuals of like what a magnetic field is. Because uh, all it can okay. really do is just show that. It could, it could, so it's only extent is through the magnetic, f- the magnetics in it. It's just to show the display of it. Uh, basically, okay. it, it, it just, it just grabs on and everything. Yeah. Which brings me, Matthew, to ferrofluid. Have you ever heard of this term? Ferrofluid. I mean, I, I got some ferrofluid. No, nope, not that I, kind of ferrofluid, <laughs> goddammit. Okay, no, the the ferrofluid no. process was created by NASA. And okay. this is where the space comes in. In 1963. And it was created as a substance to make more efficient rocket fuel. Now, ferrofluid is an oil-like substance that contains narrow ferromagnetic particles that carries magnetic fields via the poles from the pole Pulls from the pole Mm -hmm. that allows a weightless gravity and surface resistant property that can manipulate an infinite amount that can be manipulated in infinite amount of ways. So basically, kind of like the same thing the slime is, but it's more in a in a a liquid form. Okay, and it's able to take over you Mm. because it's in a liquid form. Ah, okay. I know it's very interesting. That, you know, something that was found in space or created for it. That it's claimed to be stable. Just like a certain substance that we also know to mm-hmm. be stable. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I just think it's, it's kind of interesting. It's like the beginning makings of what we would think that's From the comics. Yes. Basically. That's so weird. Now, Matt, I do, I do have uh, more of a visual. Under- okay. uh, so you can get a better understanding of what it re- like really is that's being that, that, I'm, that I'm talking about. Okay. And there's something I forgot to mention. It's also black. Oh, nice. Like legit venom. Yeah, like a literally. This is the closest thing to a symbiote thing that we have in the real life. So what the guy did is that he, this is all manipulated through magnets, unfortunately. But what he did is he created a sleeve on his arm right here. And I'll just go ahead and show you. Oh, shit. Do you see that? So he's touching the liquid. Oh, shit. And you can literally see the same properties that a symbiote do you see that that is crazy that just, okay yeah okay so how can we weaponize that i don't know if it's to this point yet it's not but i don't yeah. think but there is a way oh oh i'm sure the military got something but yeah well it was created for nasa what I'm, yeah what i'm saying like in the vault somewhere they got something funny enough oh nowadays ferrofluids are found in every electronic device Oh. Whether it's your cell phone, whether it's hard drives, anything that's good, that because they require magnetic poles and everything inside. And again, it's 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 preferred because of the minimal space it takes, right. how light it is, and the infinite amount of ways that you you can manipulate it. What does it do in our phones, though? Uh, I'm I just just is it in the battery? Maybe is that what battery acid is? No, battery acid is it's its own thing. Oh. It's it's maybe just to 
I don't know, dude. Some some kind of magnet shit. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't look too 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 deep into. I mean, it. we got a touch screen, so it, who knows? You know. Yeah, I, it is used in almost every electronic device, though. Oh, you okay. know, to some degree, whether it's a tiny speck, just just it's more of like a balancing stable kind of property because okay. it does create its own magnetic field. Mm. You know what I mean? And again, yeah. it's weightless. So if, if you need magnetic field to balance out the other side that you're using, obviously, why not use that, right? Yeah, because it's just, yeah, has a better upside. But the interesting thing, Matt, that although this substance is claimed to be primarily oil mm-hmm. and magnetic n- nanoparticles, it's a simple recipe that most people should be able to create, right? There's yeah. there's more intricate things, obviously, to this recipe, but it has not been released to the public mm. ever since its creation. Of course. And it only, the, 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 the recipe and the creation belongs to one company. Only one company has in the entire world has access, manufactures, and distributes all ferrofluids that are available in the world. Ferrofluids were, was created by Steve Papel. He was a NASA engineer that came up with the whole concept in, ni- in the 1960s. And the company that, that has this whole patent and everything is the Ferrotech Corporation. That from its inst- inception till now has all all, all the rights to, to all the to, patents to yeah, it, all, uh, the, all the, the control of it, everything. Any na- uh, fer- ferro fluids that are in most devices, they have control over. Hmm. That's weird because I got some right here. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, no, it's, just, it's just fucking gooped up. You can buy it. Oh, you, you, yeah, oh okay. no, no, you can buy it, oh. but it's up in price, and all. All of it just comes back to the source. No, so it did look like it had some type of nanotech technology. Like, it looks like nanotech, right? Yeah. So it looks, uh, obviously, there's a scientific mixture to it. Like you said, it's electromagnetic field, electromagnetic fields. It, it does its thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if there, was, I, there has to be a way that they've already tested and packaged an actual nano, like, in that. Could you imagine it's like a body armor type of thing? Oh, 100%. Where the substance, yeah. If if a guy in his in his garage yeah. can be able to have it just climb up of it mm-hmm. by like just ele- electric charge, yeah. there is uh, of course there is. Yeah. They use this sh- shit, clear it up with some st- stuff, make it like a skin tight camouflage type thing. There's no way that they it- they easily there are easily better magnet uh, uh, magnetic suits out there mm-hmm. that are probably more lightweight that like you said could be skin tight, could be worn and stuff. And if there's any way they can find to like make that substance. I don't know. Armor? Armor, heat resistant, cold resistant, bulletproof, whatever, right? Whatever you can, you know, whatever you can think well, of. Well, technically, if you, if if the magnetic field is strong enough, it can repel, like. It can repel stuff mm-hmm. forces, right? So that's what I'm saying. It's if there's crazy. any way you can have a sleeve of that thing and it, and that version of it is very strong, could you imagine getting shot out? Dee, 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 dee. And the bullets are just falling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get hit with an invisible shield. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. To cap your tata. Mm. Ah, that's crazy. Mm. No. That's crazy. So, all right, so we're all right, amateur, amateur goo on the way. We're, we're gonna make it. <laughs> amateur goop. Yeah, amateur goop. <laughs> feral mat <laughs> juice <laughs> coming on the way. What was it called? Feral, 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 feral juice. Feral juice. Feral juice, feral juice on the way. <laughs> Click right here for your order of Matt's feral with, juice. With uh, amateur twenty, you can yeah. get twenty percent off of Matt's a- f- 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 fertile juice. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, okay, that's interesting. That's actually crazy. That's probably the most realistic thing we have to a venom symbiote. Even to just like a super suit that that is uh, made aware to the public. Yeah, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They probably got all types of weird shit. I can't even fathom. It scares me to even think about what the fuck the top ranking people of the world actually know. Like in, in, as far as weapon design, technology, nanotechnology, AI technology, like the things that people are, at, you know, someone's in a basement right now forced to work on this shit. Let me pose a question. Oh, fuck. Okay. We recently reacted to The Boys, right? Yeah. I'll get a link right here. And we established that that series is like a very real interpretation of what would happen. Oh, yeah. Do you think it's far-fetched to to say that po- they have possibly been making experiments like that in the real world? No, no, no. Because there's CIA documents that actually talk about um, them uh, remote viewing. You know what that is? No. Remote viewing is the ability for individuals to move their consciousness to different places and see things and there's actual CIA documents that they did testing on these MK things. Ultra, right? MK Ultra is its own thing. Uh I was 
Uh, again, they, they go. I, they can go hand in hand. And and the conspiracy thing that we just released, like, not 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 to be plugging our things, but go watch them if you haven't. Come on now. I was gonna talk about that initially. MK Ultra. MK Ultra. Uh, okay. Because that was something that I read the first time around, mm-hmm. and I just didn't have the means to fully yes indulge like the way that we do now. Yeah. So next time we do conspiracy theories, I'm definitely talking about that. This is a this is in the same realm, but it it could be connected, but I don't. It's not necessarily connected. It's it was the remote viewing were just. CIA documents that they were testing specific individuals who had this ability to actually be given coordinates and they throughout any time like it could be it could have been a year ago it could be tomorrow they had the ability to remote view certain spots and the and there's documentations and there's like the files are actually crazy I actually stood up one night and uh, read a lot of them. like dream walking a little bit but it, but they're awake at this moment it's, it's it's like lucid dreaming but while you're not dreaming right yeah. So you, they they in the documents they give someone the coordinates. They say like you know longitude, latitude, and then the person would just describe. I'm seeing pillars. I'm seeing this. I'm seeing that. And, and they would be like, yes, you know, like it, it, it's just all types of um, it's all types of uh, weird stuff. You said lucid dreams. Damn. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I still see your shadows in my room. <laughs> That's scary. I don't want to see no damn shadows in my room. Anyway, so yeah. Anyway, so uh, the, uh, that just I don't put it past that that we probably got a better substance of this, and it's probably doing some crazy shit. Angel, I have my own little tidbit of news, kind of a current event thing. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you have not. But let me go ahead and just read you this article. A recent study has uncovered a concerning presence: microplastic pollution in human testicular uh, testicular tissue. Researchers examined 23 human testes. And 47... Testes or testes? Testes. Testes, testes. <laughs> yeah. Right? It says... <laughs> hey, so I'm going to just see your testes real quick. Yeah, let me test these, hey, testes. Yeah. Come test these, testes. testes. <laughs> yeah. You lied about them testes. You lied <laughs> about your microplastics. You lied about your... <laughs> okay. Go on. Okay. So it says, um, researchers examined 23 human test testes... And 47 canine testes. Detecting, micro- de- detecting microplastics in every sample. While sperm count can't be measured in the preserved human samples, a link emerged in the dogs. Canines with higher levels of PVC microplastics exhibited lower sperm counts. So they're just kind of saying if it's happening in the dogs, it's probably happening in the humans. They just couldn't test it in the humans fully. This finding suggests a potential correlation, but further research is required to definitively establish a cause and effect relationship between my- microplastics and sperm health. So basically, the, the whole news article about this is that science scientists and researchers dissected male and dog testicles, and they found an alarming... So were they just jerking everybody off? No, they 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 just cut them open. They're they're I'm sure they were dead already. Oh, so they were they were the testicles. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm Too the, much beating. I'm sure. I'm sure these subjects were not alive. But when they did when they did this in depth dissection of the testicles, they found that they were all filled. Hundred percent of the subjects had an alarming amount of microplastics in the testicles begs to the it begs the question that where else are these microplastics? Right. So the whole point of I'm bringing this up is that. Microplastics are actually infesting our bodies without us even knowing. What are microplastics for the people at home that don't know? Glad you asked. Any type of container that plastic is that that's used that's plastic on a small, 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 small scale, there's many shards of plastic coming off on these cups and everything that uses plastic. And those tiny shards are being ingested. And they're being absorbed by our body. They're starting to find them everywhere now. So there's nothing but... So we're having an alarming amount of microplastics in our body on a day-to-day use. The water bottles we use, the cups we buy, the, the drinks that we that we get through the store that are used in plastic containers. Let me, let me, let me just see if... You let me drink this entire tea. Yeah. Knowing I was going to tell you about this. Okay. I was banking on it. All right. I got him. I got. So I now, got, who is gonna test my testes? I don't know. Uh, like in the comments, <laughs> see who wants to test the testes. Come test the testes. Here's my question, though. What's up? And not to interrupt you, but why dogs? I don't know. Probably because uh, I, I didn't say it didn't go into into any further research. I, it has to be 
about I mean dogs do consu- they have plastic toys their their food is in those plastic bags that's a form of plastic the dog food bags so I think they were just testing things that do like come in contact with a lot of plastic right I don't know why it was specifically men testicles and dog testicles but yeah the, I would just assume it's because of well because I was opposed to women testicles right well you know you there's a, you can check women women don't women don't have testicles they do they're just inside but I'm just saying, yeah, is, of course. Is, is that all women? No. Because, I don't know, the new DLC update. Oh, the new, the new update. If, someone, if you got the update. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You can. Yeah. You, it's you, summer. You never know. No. No, you never know. But I don't know I why they specifically... I don't know why they specifically picked dogs, but yeah, um, the more that I started to, to look into this microplastic thing, it was just apparent that it's literally in everything. We can't outrun it because literally it's in everything. You every fucking water bottle I drink is out of a fucking plastic bottle. If your food containers, like the, f- the food you could ever, everything that's packaged ever, and it, a lot of it comes from not only not only do the microplastics are like pose a threat. There's these things called phthalates, which they are plastic chemicals that are actually being leaked into the food as well. And they're not only just coming from the packaging; they're coming from the manufacturing side of things. Every warehouse out there, or every fucking everything that uses a machine, the more processes that these these foods and liquids go through machines, the more exposure that they're 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 getting microplastics off of the machines themselves. Because a lot of these machines that produce food, meat, drinks, they have plastic coverings to make sure that things are sanitary. That plastic is shedding microplastics, so you're getting microplastics from the manufacturer. Then you have the shipping that's in plastic microplastics there then you have like i said once we consume the food cook the food and we put it in a container there's little tiny fibers of plastics that are in the food that it's being absorbed so you're literally just on every level you have some some type of contact with these shards it's actually scary the more i thought the more i looked into it the more i don't know what's scarier the actual microplastics physically being in your body or the 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 chemicals from these plastics that are being leaked into the food for example you know the the brand um, Fair Life? They have like the milk brand. Yeah. Their protein milk tested one of the highest on the market for those plastic chemicals leaking into their drinks and stuff like that. So the, uh, if you're a big consumer of those uh, those plas- those uh, Fair Life's protein shakes, there's a lot of chemicals that are being introduced in there. Do you know how like with recent events of like shrinkflation and things like that companies changing their bottles and their plastic manufacturing and stuff yep. shutting down less and less mm-hmm. is that also a big contributor as to why this is such a is it a big thing now or is it just that we're only aware of it until we're, now it, it's it's bit or is it both i think that i think it's both i think the fact that they tested a hundred percent of the human testicles had a bunch of microplastics in there a hundred percent every every person that they t- every Every subject that they tested was had microplastics. There was not one person that did not have a high amount of them. I was just stuck on the testes, dude. If no. I'm being honest, I didn't hear must mo- yeah. mo- much. Hundred percent of the test subjects, the males and the canines. So you you mentioned the fact that they there's they seem less fertile, right? The dogs tested less fertile. So let's just let, let's just be generous that like one in ten guys like like that happens to them. Mm-hmm. What does that mean for us that we're going to become less and less fertile? It as just we... means the human race is becoming less and less fertile on the men's side of things and women's side of things. And right now, humanity is at an all-time low of having children. Oh well, that's just because of the collapsing economy. Well, that, that I don't know if it's only because of that. Because well, it's every, a big factor. Ev- yes, but every collapsing economy still people just be fucking. It's never stopped anybody. We're at that stage now where yes, the the economy and people are a little bit smarter, and a lot of us are saying I'm not gonna bring a kid into the world right now. I can barely fucking can barely afford a sixteen dollar meal at McDonald's. So, but I don't, I don't, I don't think that this is helping at all. I think this is actually contributing to fifty percent of that. Like it's just infertility, infertility issues. Like, ha- like the women are having a lot of. I feel like like PCOS is is becoming more of a thing. Like, there's a lot of health issues in women that are just rising. A lot of health issues in men are rising, and I think it all stems from the processed foods, but not just the pro- the processed foods. The fucking things, like like I said, on a microscopic level, which plastic shards that build plastic up plastic chemicals. Yeah, that's why you're not supposed to leave your bottles of water in the car, because the heat heats up the bottle there's these there's fumes and 
<laughs> there's fumes and there's chemicals and the bottle it secretes things and all of a sudden you're drinking tainted fucking water. <laughs> He's like, I gotta go. So you see what I'm saying? This was just an alarming breaking news type thing that I just really was like, hold on. Matt, it, three weeks in a row, you have said something that has shook me to my core. Now I'm going to go home and just drink everything straight from the source. Bro, it's in it's in our water. If you use PVC pipes. Fuck. If there if it's in your showers, if your if your house apartment has PVC pipes, it's everywhere. But like you have to think about it. How much how much is like in our brain? How much is in You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people have mental issues, brain fog, <laughs> gut issues. Like how much of this is contributing to those factors? You know what I'm saying? Mental health is at an all-time uh, high. Um, well, that's for a lot of reasons. But, that, but that's what I'm saying. Like I, the, the, everything has. What I'm saying is like it's just an accumulation of all types of things. I don't think the microplastics are the only thing. But I'm yeah. saying if they're in your nuts, what stops it from being in your brain, in your heart, in your arteries, in your you know what I'm saying? Like if something's in my nuts, it's usually on my brain too. That's well, that's what I'm saying. They go hand in hand. Yeah, they do. Know? So one might say that the nuts are the brain of the body. Uh, one of them switches off. Whichever yeah. one you're using, the other one's not working. We exactly. Can't, we can't have, can't have both Mm-mm. be too powerful. Nuh-uh. But, ladies and gentlemen, if she does not suck the microplastics out of you, she, she ain't the one. You. She ain't the one. She don't fucking love you. So, no, that's just what I wanted to catch you up on. I wanted to ruin your day. What if um, you just pass them like kidney stones? Uh, you probably do. You you probably do. So, what's the solution to this, though? There is no solution. Like, never using plastic, finding a better alternative. But, what are we really going to do that? Glass? Yeah. Hey, but what if what if what if glass or metal? Glass shards. Or even metal. Glass shards. That's what I'm saying. Like, <gasps> fuck, dude. What the fuck are we supposed to use? What the fuck like, are we supposed to do, bro? Shit. I don't know. See, we we fucked. Sorry, I unplugged myself. Let me go ahead and try that again. Let me see. You push a T. <gasps> I'm just kidding. You know, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> You should leave that in for a blooper. Just at the end of the video. <laughs> I probably got plugged back in. That was that was good. That was I was that was convincing. I saw I felt it. I said No, but we fucked ourselves, dude. Yeah. Cause we we pre, we, we got to a point in life where everything is prepackaged. Like we have pushed ourselves to this thing. Everything has plastic. Everything has plastic. Every, everything you buy from the store is in a fucking plastic container. <laughs> everything you use is in plastic. This is plastic. This is not plastic. This is plastic. This is plastic. These are plastic. My nuts are plastic. At like, this point. At this point, point I don't know. They, uh, we're all plastic now. We're all, we all, might as well be. I'm what about all, like toys? Plastic. I be eating toys all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not what you meant. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, all the things you eat when you see a plastic bottle, a plastic plate, a plastic whatever, just know you're ingesting some sort of micro bits. Are we getting to the point where we're just like informing people morbidly? Yeah, like now, like our podcast has just become a hub of bad news. Like, <laughs> what are they supposed to Last week they learned that Gaga, and then now. Microplastics. Now you can't eat anything in peace. Now you can't, can't listen, listen to anything in peace. peace. Now inflation and can't even die in peace. No. Like wait, why why can't you die in peace? I don't know. Cause the world's gonna stop and then you're gonna die. Ah, then, boom. Can't even, yeah. can't even do it peacefully now. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to inform you guys that microplastics are taking over our body and who knows, maybe they're already maybe the microplastics are are sentient and that's the whole thing. They're like nanobots just infiltrating. If they're nanobots, that means that we can create a a soup. So, plastic suit. I'll be Magneto, but like plastic, pl- 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 plastido, plastic, pl- Plato. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, no, yeah. I don't know. I think that's a greater power, though. Plastic Imagine man? plastic man. You oh. get to control all the plastic in the world. But what the There's fuck way more plastic do- in the world than metal. Yes, but what are you gonna do with the plastic? How do create you create a big ball and suffocate throw it somebody? people? Yeah, just. I'll put you in a bottle, and then I'll suck the air out the bottle. Are condoms plastic? Latex. You can wrap somebody in the condom. Can't condom. even have sex without the got little <laughs> microplastics going down your pee hole. God, that's probably how they got there, dude. You hear it oh, here, ladies and gentlemen. Be, yeah. Don't use condoms. We figured <laughs> we figured it out. Just don't. Raw patrol. <laughs> that's what they call us. Yeah. Anyway, 
Anyway, that's, that sponsor was, Blue Chew. You can sponsor <laughs> Trojan Condoms. You just said don't use condoms. Oh, and this sponsor. <laughs> Trojan condoms. Trojan condoms. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. So yes, that, the microplastics are in your body. I just wanted to let you guys know. All right, Matthias, why don't we get to talking to what the to what the meat and potatoes of this episode is? What is the meat and potatoes of this episode? Sports scandals. Oh, things that have shaken us to the core. Well, not necessarily, but you know. Speak for yourself, brother. I'm an avid sports fan. That's the thing about me, man. Like I'm a nerd. But I'm also a sports person. Like I'm nerd. a I'm a cool nerd. I'm not like one. I'm not I'm not one of you. Sports sports nerds are the exact same thing. Nah, I think it's nah. Worse I'm, actually. I'm like a watching I'm a, other people I'm, play with balls. I'm a cool nerd though. Like mm-hmm. I can go kick it and read comic books with you, and then I can go I can go in the the layup line with the best of them. Well, you know yeah. There's a lot of sports viewers that aren't good at sports though. I think that's the ironic part of it. Yeah, that is pisses me out. But sports <laughs> scandals. Um. We all heard of some. I'm really curious to see which ones you're gonna what you're gonna talk about. Well, I have a scandal that happened to me personally. Oh, mine too. But Matthew, let me hear yours. Let me hear yours. Have I ever told you about my friend Joey? No. Surprising. Yeah. Because up until recently, I didn't really start sharing about myself. Yeah, I don't know. I know nothing about him, guys. Joey was one of the very few people in my young life. That participated in the sport of boxing. He was in and out of gyms for a while. All that we knew about Joey before, you know, he coming into the and being the new kid on the block. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we were we were a strip prior to him being the new kid. All we knew was he that he was from the Bronx. Damn. Hey, I'm walking here. Didn't have much of an accent though. He oh. sounded different, but not to that degree. I'm walking here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> Joey was put into boxing. At a very young age right. to keep him out of trouble. Yeah. That's what he told us. Now, Joey had fights. Well, more like glorified spars, looking back at it. But we were kids. We didn't even know what that meant. All we knew was that people a were... Fight to fight. Fight to fight. Joey even gave himself the moniker, the Flexin Mexican. The Flexin Mexican. The Flexin Mexican. The Flexin Mexican. Joey the Flexin Mexican, he would call himself. What would you call yourself if you were a boxer? Myself? Yeah, like if you, what would your nickname be? <laughs> that's a good that's a good question. Angel Twinkle Toes De La Rosa Montoya. Twinkle Toes is not a bad at one actually. I like when they I like when there's like a huge guy and they call him Tiny. That that's the one. It's tiny. Funny. Tiny. Angel Tiny. Damn. Angel the micro. The micro. Mike. <laughs> yes. The micro. The, the micro plastic. Because I'm going to go directly in your nuts. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. But see, Joey was good. But nobody really wanted to fight him. Given the fact that he was a Southpaw. Again. Shout out. He w- would say all this shit, but it meant nothing. That, yeah, he's like, I'm a Southpaw. And you're like, cool. I'm on the yeah, West Side. Yeah. yeah I'm on the West Side. He, <laughs> so at this point, I'm around like 10 maybe 11 years old. And as I mentioned before, I was the youngest of the neighborhood kids. And at this time, Joey happened to be one of the oldest. And he tells us one day after playing a couple of rounds of Capture the Flag. With Capture the Flag, we never really had flags. We just do more with random objects. One week it could be a ball. The next week it could be a brick. How one week we even used Leslie's shoe. Oh, nice. Shout out to Leslie. Les, actually, you you, you know about Leslie. Because Leslie was the older girl that invited me to go watch Uh... Zombie Land with me. First time I'm name dropping just because I yeah. don't think she's ever going to see this. Yeah, so, shout out to Leslie. Yeah, if you guys want to see the whole story about that, go ahead and click click right here. Yeah. But anyways, Joey tells us, I got called out by the best guy in our gym. He has an amateur tournament coming up and he wanted to spar. But I was like, no, 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 no. I want to fight. So next Friday, we're having a fight before he goes to train for his tournament. And so there we go. All of us on Friday, we go down to the gym. One by one, we're picking each other up via bikes. You know how it is on the old days. The first one down the block comes here, and then it comes back, and then it comes back, and then it comes back. I'm up the night before, Matthew, cleaning my bike, making sure it's nice and squeaky, making sure the pegs are on right because we're taking the girls too. Uh. 5 p.m. comes, and we're all there at the gym. There's the ring. It's going to be used for the fight, but, you know, everybody else is in the gym at the same time too. There's people practicing, there's people yelling, people sweating. A lot of fucking sweat. It smells really bad in there, actually. Joey told us that the dude he was beating was named Adolfo. He said he had won some kind of belt earlier a year. Just didn't remember what it was. Ah, but it didn't ah, matter. Ah, just, I won it, but I didn't even look. I didn't take it home, you know? So there we go. Joey, 
the Flexin Mexican, I don't know. and Adolfo Cruz are in the ring. And to be honest, I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know what, what it is they're wearing on their heads because at this point, I see them boxing. And it's all just, you know, combat. I don't know what they're wearing, the yeah, headgear. The headgear and all that, yeah. Boom. There is the loud beeps that ring. Mm-hmm. And they start. Adolfo Cruz is styling on Joey. Seeing that Adolfo was the clear favorite, showboating, playing up a true showman. But Joey has heart. He has hands, but no real defense. It seems like Joey is taking shot after shot, just head on. Like Rocky? It's almost like in a cartoon fashion, you know? Yeah. No defense, but to carry on. <laughs> round after round, he's there. At some point, Adolfo... Has, actu- has to actually start trying. And he's trying his hardest to get Joey out of there. But he has heart. He looks over to his corner and his coach, Mike, as he yells, keep hitting me in the ribs, you see? Don't let that bastard breathe. One punch, one step, one right on the tie, Matthew. Joey goes after Adolfo. And then, boom, the fight is over and both men have given them all they got. And after 15 rounds, it's up to the judges. 15 rounds? <laughs> And still, the undisputed champion of West Phoenix, Adolfo Cruz. Damn. Joey, lo- Joey looks over to his best friend, Polly and his sister, Adrian, as they rush in the ring, and Joe's- Joey tells him it's okay. And then Polly's like, hey, why is the side of your face kind of curving? It's almost like you're talking with a little slant. Everyone in the arena knows that night that Joey was the true champion and that Apollo had only won via the judges that led into an immense controversy and to the second fight. See, I would go a little bit more into that, but it would take a little too long. Quite frankly, like almost like a minute and 50, uh, an hour and 59 minutes to, you know, be completely honest with you. But so I'll leave that for next time. Angel. <laughs> Yeah. It's a very captivating story. Yeah. Almost like it's a fucking movie. <laughs> almost like almost. Don't get me fucking wrong here. Like it's a fucking movie? No. Already? That maybe was made in the eighties? Cause what? somehow Adolfo's name <laughs> changed from Adolfo <laughs> to Apollo? <laughs> And Polly and Adrian, what do you think? What? Do you, what, do you, what? you think I'm stupid? No, no, dude. I swear to God, Joey the Flexing Mexican was the guy. That is the- not. That's very. That's very similar to the Italian Stallion. To be completely frank with you, Matt, I was watching Rocky this past weekend. And that's I, what you did. And- that's what you're, I don't, what's the scandal? What's the scandal? The controversy that Adolfo robbed them, bro. Halfway through the story, I'm going, this sounds, this, this is, I even said, like Rocky? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I moved on. I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> you had me in the first half. Then you said Apollo, and I'm like. <laughs> uh, no, I, I didn't, I don't, I don't have much sports scandals on my end, personally wise. That was good. That was good. That was a that was a controversial. Yeah. No. Thing. Yeah. Joey went out to just have a memorable life. A whole statue built of him in West Phoenix, <laughs> like this. <laughs> All right. Well, good story. Good scandal. Very controversial. Definitely feels like history repeats itself. Right. Shout out to Joey. Thank you for that lovely story. No. Yeah. It's... Of perseverance and controversy. It's yeah, good. It shook up the game. It felt it, like let's uh let's bring it back to um. I actually, it's funny that you you say that because uh, my scandal of, uh, also is uh, we're gonna take you back. We're gonna take you back in time, right? I was uh, present, not present day, past, <laughs> past Matt, right? Past Matt, past Matt. So let me ask you a quick question. The NBA, you're familiar with it, right? National boobs, <laughs> Aristotle. Nope, none of that. So the NBA, the National Basketball Association, right? My sports scandal that will forever haunt me has to do with the NBA referee gambling scandal. Are you familiar with this? I read a little. A little I, I read the, I read a little bit about it in the research of this. Okay, you've seen right. So let me bring it back to you. In 2007, there was a betting scandal involving the National Basketball Association. There were accusations that an NBA referee used his knowledge of relationships between referees coaches, players, and owners to bet on his professional basketball games. In July 2007, reports of an investigation by the FBI were made public 
which alleged that during the 2005 to 2006 and the 2006 to 2007 NBA seasons, where a referee named Tim Donahue bet on games in which he officiated. Donahue later admitted to betting on games that he officiated in each of the seasons spanning from 2003 to 2007, right before he got caught. Donahue resigned from the league on July 9th, 2007, and on August 15th, Donahue pleaded guilty to two federal charges related to the investigation. He was sentenced to 15 months in federal prison on July 29th, 2008. So that's the basis of what this is. This NBA ref got caught doing some fuck shit. He was, he was betting on games that obviously he was officiating, which it's, is really fucking grimy for fans. Being a fan of these, of these games, being a fan of this, this sport, knowing that some of these outcomes were, in, were, 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 were influenced based off of someone just gambling and abusing their power, that's crazy enough, right? So was he placing a bet and then orchestrating to his favor? Interesting. Good question. So let me let me let me elaborate. Fixing games and rumors of professional sports being rigged has been a part of the mythos since the inception of these sports, right? It always lingers. Something that one fan base doesn't get a call in their favor, it's rigged. You a referee misses a call, oh, rigged, right? It's part of the game. So I'm sure you've heard of some chatter amongst sports fans about the industry being rigged. I personally have always thought that if it wasn't rigged, it definitely was influenced because the players still got to put the ball in the basket so you can call fouls on them all you want but if another player is putting the ball in the basket it's going to dampen your your whole thing right it's a little hard to manipulate all the players and the ball i mean you can nip- manipulate my balls yeah microplastics my, my, my microplastics yeah that's what I'm gonna, that's what we're referring to now <laughs> suck these microplastics bitch so the reason i bring this specific incident up angel I'm just going to write that down. For yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Write it down, write it down. Okay. So, the reason I bring this specific incident up, Angel. Is that with an exclamation part, Mark? Yeah, you can. You got okay. to put the bitch. Bitch. Yeah. Do I capitalize it? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Two, two, uh, two H's. Two H's. Yeah. Okay, you got it. Cool. Let me save it. Okay, we're good. All right. The reason I bring this specific incident up is because it impacted me directly. Not only the NBA potentially influencing the outcome of games, ruining the game that I've loved all of my life, but this angel holds such an important place in my life because this rigging issue affected our own state team, the Phoenix Suns. Now let me break it down to you. As a Suns fan, this is this this hurts, right? The Suns got matched up against the Spurs, who had beaten them in the playoffs in 2004, 2005, and now they were matched up again in 2007. It was widely agreed that whoever won this series between the Suns and the Spurs was going to win it all. Even the media was talking about it. I remember my dad saying it to me. He, he was pretty much saying, these are the two best teams in the league right now. Whoever wins this series is definitely going to go to the finals and beat, and beat the Cavaliers. It was, a long, it was a young LeBron James, 22-year-old LeBron. He didn't have the greatest team. Those two, the Spurs and the Suns, were the best full complete teams at the time. What year was this? <clears throat> it was uh, 07. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I know one player on the team. Who? It's only because I had the game. Who? Amari Stunemeyer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. How proud are you that I know that name? A little bit. <laughs> Respect. Now, after the series was tied at one game apiece, the Suns losing the first game, the Suns winning the second game. It was time for game three. The referees for this game, there was three of them. Three are assigned each game. The lead referee was Greg Willard. The second was Eddie Rush. And the third was none other than Tim Donahue himself. Fucking bitch. Fucking bitch. Fucking. Now. I'm going to grab you by your micro Yeah. So now let me, let me just go down memory lane with you guys really quick. Anybody who was a, a Suns fan around this time, right, or who was just current in the in the, the basketball scene around this time, they all can remember this game three because I remember it so vividly, Angel. This game was one of the worst officiated games that I've seen in a very long time. There didn't seem to be much rhyme or reason for the calls at times, but they all definitely favored the Spurs. Being a fan and watching the game, this has stuck with me for years because of how bad it was. It didn't even feel real at times. 
with some of the fouls being called, they literally seconds after the play is already developed. For example, there was a play where a re, uh, Ginobili got a rebound for the Spurs, got a rebound. You know, they're fighting for the rebound. He grabs it. He actually stands there. He dribbles two times. The players are already running back. Foul. Like half the team was already on defense, and they called a foul five seconds after he got fouled. Like if you're going to call it, call it. But don't let time run off the clock, and then no one's around this individual, and then you call a foul and say, oh, well, you did foul. Oh, so it's not like football? No, you can't just call it at any time. You're supposed to call it when it occurs. So if I smack you and you don't call it and we dribbled up the court and we get all the way at the end and then you call it, that's fucking weird. You can't do that. That's what they were doing. Phantom calls. Calling things where it just wasn't wasn't making any sense. Uh huh. So after game three, the Suns lose and there was so much talk about the game and the officiating. Game four comes around and the Suns are in prime position to win the game. In the last few minutes, a Spurs player named Robert Ory hip checks Steve Nash, sending him flying into the scores table. I'm sure you've seen the clip. Yeah, he's, he's small. Driving, and he hip checks him. Steve Nash goes flying into the, into the stands. A scuffle starts, and unfortunately, two of the Suns players, two of the Suns stars, by the way, starters, who were sitting on the bench, they get up when the scuffle starts. It was Amari Stoudemire and Boris Diaw, two very integral pieces to their offense. Mm-hmm. They were on the bench at the time, and unfortunately... Amari and Boris Diaw took one full step off of the bench lines onto the court. And that was enough for the NBA to suspend them for one game. They had to. In the middle of the playoffs, mind you. They didn't walk up to anyone. They didn't, they didn't, like, uh, they didn't get a part of the scuffle. It was just the fact that, unfortunately, the rules say when a fight starts, the bench players need to stay on the bench. And unfortunately, Amari... And Diao just, they try to get like a good angle of the scuffle and they just took one step off, like like literally the out of bounds line, they just stepped over it. Big feet. Done. The Suns would end up losing that series after that. They fought, they fought valiantly in game five and then they got finished in game six. Amari came back and actually scored 38 points that day. Wasn't enough. Momentum have already shifted. Now Tim, Tim Donahue has served his time and... After he's gotten through his prison sentence, he's given some insight into these games and how the NBA referees move. Very shocking, actually. Stating that he never actually fixed games in the moment to win bets. But he did make bets based on the information he was given in their pregame meetings with all the refs before a game, before a playoff series. The referees that are, that are officiating, they will have a meeting. And it's widely known that they discuss what they're going to be looking for, what they're not going to be looking for. And I know it doesn't sound right, but this is in terms of like, okay, these two teams play aggressive, so we need to start watching like to make sure no one gets hurt. That's what those meetings are supposed to be. But as you know, people are fickle, and uh, emotions do come into play. Prejudice. Yeah, all that. One ref in particular, whose name was Tommy Nunez, he was the group supervisor of the time, or at the time, for that series. And it was very clear that Nunez did not like Sarver, who was the owner of the Suns at the time and was always pointing out in tape sessions of things to call against the Suns. Things not to concentrate on against the Spurs. That's a quote from Donahue. He said, Nunez told us, look for these things with the Suns. Don't worry so much on that side. We want to make the calls against them. So the <laughs> Spurs didn't have any like insight that... The it- Spurs, the, the organization itself did not. At least, I mean, you never know with these things, right? You uh-huh. never fucking know. But, but no, the, the, this was a NBA officiating circle. Uh-huh. Um, the referees are their own band of, they police the games, right? So, so they have their prejudice. They're they almost have, like third party. They're, they're, well, they're not third party, but it's like they act in the interest of the NBA. Mm. So if the NBA, the commissioner says, we want to make sure the Lakers goes seven games. The referees are going to make sure that they go seven games Yo. for TV ratings, ticket sales, whatever it could be. It's widely known. A lot of players talk about it now, especially with podcasts being available. A lot of former players come on there and they they speak their minds about what's going on. Donahue said that those meetings were definitely there to give the Spurs an advantage. They had the advantage going in. Even though the Spurs were not the better team, they had the refs on their side. Donahue has also stated that a retired crime family captain under the name Michael Francisi was on record saying that in the 90s, he had multiple referees on his personal payroll to help influence games and make money off of that. Other players have actually come out 
and talked about how you're familiar with Allen Iverson, right? Yeah. Allen Iverson was not liked by NBA refs. Allen Iverson, Allen Iverson was not liked by a lot of people coming in because of he was he was to them too hood, too ghetto, too uh, abrasive, too aggressive, whatever, right? And he had a lot of beef with the refs, and they didn't take too kindly to that. And they would all gather up and say, "All right, tonight Iverson usually carries the ball when he does his crossover. We're not letting him carry tonight." So every time Iverson went for his signature crossover, beep, carry. Carry. Iverson even went up to one of the refs. He even went up to Donahue during one of those games. And he goes up to him and says, so how long is this going to go? And Donahue just smiled and said, what are you talking about? And he goes, you know what I'm talking about. How long is this going to last? And what he was referring to was that Iverson actually got into it with one of the, the head referees, threatening him, saying he would beat his ass or whatever. And the referee, they all they all have each other's backs. So they all said, okay. He said, fuck you. We're going to say fuck him. So Iverson was targeted. You fuck me, we all fuck you. You fuck me, we fucking you. Hey. So Iverson was a target to that type of behavior as well. So this wasn't out of the norm. So the reason why I picked this specific scandal is because, like I said, being an, being an avid Suns fan at the time, watching games with my dad growing up just you know, like watching the Suns every year get close, but never really make it. It kind of puts in perspective that a lot of these referees have been on record saying that they did not like the organization. The, they didn't like the, they didn't like the owner. They didn't like management. So they would do a lot of their, they would do a lot of work to go out of their way to make sure that the Suns did not see success. And it probably, it's kind of like that still to this day. Robert Sarver is no longer the owner of the Suns, mm-hmm. Matt Ishbia is. Hopefully things change, right? Maybe he'll have better rapport with the referees, better rapport with the NBA. Uh, is and that maybe... why the Suns were like down for so many years too? Um, not necessarily why they were down. Every team kind of has a down year. When, when, the, when the team's peaks are over, they always have to enter, most teams have to enter a rebuilding phase, right? Uh-huh. Try to draft some stars, try to build from the bottom. Yeah. The Suns, because Robert Sarver is so fucking greedy and picky and fucking stupid, fuck you, because he doesn't know how to manage a team, he, he was just content with the Suns being good enough to be in the playoffs to maybe get a squeeze some extra revenue from a playoff series or two, but never enough to put the money down to make sure that they can take that next step. So the Suns were in limbo. They were, they were in basketball purgatory, which is just is way worse than sucking because one, one thing is like if your team sucks, your team sucks. But it's another when your team has this false hope of they might do something and then they just never do. And Sarver was a part of that where... Like I said, they they always traded their draft picks. They always made sure that they always got old stars. The Suns have this thing about going after old superstars that are like the last two years of their peak. Yeah, the, the, way past their prime. Yeah, you know, and they're doing that right now. Fucking KD. We got KD on his last legs. He's 34 years old, 35 years old. Like, he's got maybe two full years of like KD level play until he starts falling back. So it's like, these are just business decisions, but it's the fact that because Robert Sarver had such an ugly relationship with the officiators and the and just the NBA in itself. Like he was just a greedy, pushy piece of shit owner that would disrespect the referees. That's the thing. is These these referees did not like the disrespect. So if you slighted them in any way, oh, it's game over. Like you're never, you're not, it's just you're not getting back in good graces. I wonder if that, if this translates to like other sports oh, too. Oh, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's every sport, everywhere. It's, it, it, it's, this is the thing is that it's common knowledge Power now. Power trip, bro. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere. But you know what's so fucked up is that there is legally in the paperwork, in the description of the NBA, the NFL, the MLB, these sports industries are labeled as entertainment. And in entertainment means that some things can be Fixed. fictional yeah. or not. Not, you know what I'm saying? Like be non-fictional, it can be fictional, right? Yeah. And that's how they save themselves from being sued. Because in the labeling, it's the same thing as the WWE. It's entertainment, right? Now, w- the WWE is clearly yeah. scripted for entertainment, but... Oh, but that took years for them to admit, too. To admit, but oh. it's in the same realm of yeah. entertainment. So, yes, it, it trickles onto everything. There's there's tons of there's tons of stories that we can go through that happen in the, the NFL. Some sports are a little harder to rig. 
Some just are. Because like I said, bro, you at the end of the day, like they LeBron fouls out because they're trying to rig it, and then a bench player comes in and scores 40 points. You can't control that. Like there's just it doesn't happen often, but there are some elements that you just can't control. Yeah. 90% of the time you can though. In conclusion, this is an issue that I don't think is ever gonna be fixed. It's not something that I think is a quick fix. You're always going to have motives, emotions. As long as humans are humans, they are always going to make decisions based off of how they feel in the moment. And in their best interest at the end of the day. And in their best interest. You would have to rework the whole checks and balances from the ground up. I don't know what, yeah. But it's it's their job, though, because their their orders are coming from somebody higher up. I mean, yeah, but in, in that you would give more, you would give more power to other places that way like the whole if they're do, doing something wrong there's other people that can like counteract that yeah but like again that's the whole rework that the too much money and stuff for the organization it's a bad look and they won't do it exactly the nba the nba defends the referees any given chance yeah any given chance the referee says it's the same thing bro it's, it's like it confuses me when like uh there's a police shooting right a wrong or a uh a, 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 potential wrongful arrest or shooting or mishap right where the actual the the same department does their own internal investigate internal investigation that's backwards to me because of course if i that's like you doing some fuck shit and me going all right guys let me let me look into it and then i'm gonna be like he didn't do shit we we're good we're it's fine i checked it i swear worry, I, I, I i you you know what i'm saying like how why would i why would i turn on our fucking show not going to. The police don't do it. The NBA is not going to do it. It's all for the protection of the brand. It's all for the protection of the brand. Damn, bro. You're saying some shit. It's fucked up, bro. I'm telling you. Being an avid sports fan be, uh, and then becoming an adult. As a kid, I I was blinded by the, the, by the, the, the hopefulness that things were fair. As a kid, you think everything's fair. Yeah. And, and as you know, it's fucked up. And just like on a side note, as a kid, you're told that things should be fair. And so you grow up thinking, okay, well, people are going to do the right thing. People aren't going to use me. People aren't going to abuse their power. Because that's what, yeah, you're told that you should do that. Because you, you're told, that's what I'm telling you, man. My mom always told me, my mom always told me to fucking tell the truth, whether whatever the consequence was, at least you told the truth. And I have learned since I've been, I've been an adult is that if I would have lied more to <laughs> Go to a couple people I would have been A little bit ahead of life When I got let go From one of my jobs If I lied I would still have my job That's the fucked up part Admitting and going Yes I did something wrong Or yes I, I did this That got me fired As opposed to me going I don't know what you're talking about What the fuck you mean So uh, It's just As a kid When it came to sports I always thought it was pure I thought the best of the best Always won That's what they painted the picture If you put in the work If you It's determination And drive and You believe the the narrative Behind the the, the season Yes Just to find out that A fucking 40 year old man Has a vendetta against LeBron So he's not gonna call An obvious foul play On a last second drive That would change the outcome Of the game So here When did When did you start to realize All this Um After this after this. What, what, what do you mean? In 2007. Really? After that became a thing, this, because it, because it became a scandal. Like, it became a, it was one thing where it was just the idea of, like, those refs really fucked that game up, but, like, who's, who's to say? Until this motherfucker got arrested, and he's been on, he, since he's been out and he's been free, which he was only in jail for, again, 15 months, not that bad. He's gone on, multi, he's gone on Vlad TV, he's gone on multiple podcasts, he's gone on multiple shows detailing things, talking about things, revealing things, saying that this did not start with him. He just was the the scapegoat for it. They got caught. He went down because he was a little sloppier than the rest. Because like I said, he wasn't betting specifically. He wasn't fixing the game specifically. What he would do is say, oh, shoot, uh, Joey Crawford doesn't like uh, doesn't like Rashid Wallace. Okay, uh, I'm going to put a bet that Rashid doesn't get 16 points today. And then Rashid would get 12 points, no foul calls. That's how he was making his bets. He wasn't fixing the games live to do it. He was going based off his information. That's how he got report. a lower sentence. That's Well, that's why. Yeah, because he wasn't fully fixing. He was just using his knowledge. Because it, it even says there that he got arrested or, or he got uh, charged with things that were a part of the investigation, not the whole fixing issue. You know what I'm saying? It's a little different. He's come out and just said all types of stuff. There's still refs that do it now. They, if anything, they do it more now because gambling's like legal. But yeah. it goes back to like and how it's bigger than fucking ever. Yep. But it goes back to how I just told you, uh, John Tay Porter, 
the NBA player that got banned because he was betting on himself, right? He got banned from the NBA. But these referees that got caught slipping or colluding with each other or using their inside information, uh, Donahue's the only one that's ever got banned from it. There's a lot more going on. There's a yeah. lot of shady shit going on with this. So in 2007 is when I it clicked that something's not right. But as an adult, I think it, I think it was just when I hit adulthood. So anywhere in my 20s where you start watching sports and you start going, damn, like this makes a lot of sense. Um, I do think, I do think a, a good chunk of winners aren't always, you know, like it's not always fixed, but I do think that they have specific state. They have storylines that they want to push. Yeah. Underdog stories. Yes. You know, legacy stories. Yes. Whatever. From from you, you can't look at us, bro. Even yeah. with our small scale, we know that the the narrative is everything. Yeah. If you can sell a narrative, you have it. Yep. So I I learned very early, and now now I'm at a now I'm at a point with with sports where I I treat them like the the same way that I treat action movies or you know things. I turn my brain off, my analytical brain, and I just enjoy the games. I can sit there and I love watching. I love watching basketball. I still love, I love watching football. Something fucked up happens and I sit there and go, eh, oh well. Just enjoy the game just for what here. it I'm is. Just, I'm just enjoying, the, I'm just enjoying what I can enjoy because they, they've really killed the belief in me that these things are real. Just can't do it no more. So when the Suns made it to the playoffs or to the finals a couple of years ago, Robert Sarver was still the owner. It makes sense that the Suns were not a like team in the NBA. Suns were not favored. The Suns ended up losing. I'm not saying they solely lost because of that, but there was discrepancies in free throws, discrepancies in calls. You know, like there's just things that just don't go, that never goes the Suns' way. It's just one of those teams. And I don't know. I don't know if it's a luck thing, a curse thing. I don't know. But now I just enjoy it for what it is. Do you remember high school games? Yeah. Like when you would play? Yeah. And you would feel as though... The ref, the yeah. ref was against yeah. you. That 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 fucking game. It was always. Can I tell you that it was always with the school? No way. No 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 no. No no way. No way. It goes down the ladder that deep. Because I'm about to say some shit. It say was it. always with the schools that held the reputation. It was always Chavez, it was always Fairfax, and it was maybe Arrivals or something like that. It was always those th- those things where we were, they could get away with so much shit. Yep. So much yep. blatant shit. Yep. So much low blow, so much... Um, Dirty plays. Yes. All types of stuff. It was only when it was so blatantly obvious, uh, obvious that they had to. Where they, they, they were flagged. But more often than not, some years were worse than others. Yeah. Holy shit. No. No way it goes down that deep. It though. does. It, it can. It goes down to favoritism. Some of these referees are fucking friends with the coach on that top, on that side. They're on the same circles. Some There's some of these no referees way. some of these referees are are teachers from different schools that come out and do this shit. Okay, so let me let me bring let me bring you back really quick. Right, this is outside of high school. This is a men's league that me that me, uh, me, Eugene, the homie Steven, who's who's a professional basketball player, and. Our friend Brandon, there was a, it was a men's uh, league that we entered. We got a team. We're playing, and in the, we're in the championship. Steven's, fuck, Steven's a professional basketball player. Steven, when I met him, was 5'7". At the end of high school, he was 6'5", right? He played for Euro teams and, and, and the G League teams in, in the NBA. We invite him over. He's a ringer, bro. I'm throwing him alley-oops, right? He's shooting from backcourt. We get into the championship game. Now, because we were in the loser's bracket, we had to win two games. Oh, yeah, to, yeah, yeah, you yeah. mentioned this yeah. story. And yeah. that was when the guy threw the ball in oh. my head, and the ref's like, cause the re- and the ref was cool with the guy that did that. He was dapping him up before the game. Yeah. They're having a fucking like little picnic, and he throws a ball at my head, and he goes, oh, no. Oh, wait, just at your head? He th- I, I fouled the guy because he went up, and I fouled him fucking hard. And, and again, you, you don't know basketball me. Like, basketball, basketball me is a little aggressive like because it's a sport. It's a competitive yeah. thing. I don't give a fuck, right? Like, when we're playing within the game of basketball, I'm, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. So... I might have said something to him. I was like, he's too, he's too small. He was all bigger than me and shit. But I said something. And the, small and, body, small body. Yeah, yeah. And the dude, he got mad, got the ball, threw the fucking ball at my head. I was, I was turned around. And the ball, bam, hits me. We turn around and it gets into a scuffle. They just called 
a regular foul on me. He got two free throws. That put them up by three with five seconds on the clock. What should have happened was he should have got a free throw for the foul, his two free throws. He missed one, so he, we, he, they were up by three. We should have got a free throw for the tech down by two, and then we get ball. But the ref, because they were cool with him, he was like, no, 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 no. And he let it go because that was his homie. Not to mention the whole running the time thing in the yeah. end. Oh, no, that was a different day. Oh. That was a different day. Me and St- that was a three-on-three tournament me and Steven and Eugene did. This was a men's league oh. tournament. This was a men's league tournament where we were in the championship. We had the trophy ready, bro. We were, it was, we were gonna, we were so there. So you had it up against you twice. Yes. Yes. Damn. The other one was the players. The, this one was the actual referees. This is what I'm saying. On a men's league level, a high school level, college, all the way up to professional sports, there is always going to be some of that fuck shit. It's annoying. That's crazy, yo. So that was the referee betting scandal of 2007 that directly affected Suns fans. And I think that year lives. That, that was one of their best teams ever, bro. That was one of their best. They just had the best offense. They were the second, they were the second seed in that, that season. <sighs> they were the cover out of 07, I yeah. remember. If they were, that team should have won a championship. And they were, they were rigged out of it. That's <sighs> fucked up. I'll never forgive these motherfuckers. If I see Tim, Tim Donahue in the street, he's catching hands. Yeah. He's catching hands. Run me the fade. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, man. That's my uh that's my oh, that's my personal scandal that affected me directly and it's the root of my trauma. <laughs> Damn, man. Yeah. I I I wish I had something equivalent to that. The only thing the only sport thing that I was that, that I gravitated towards when I was little was WWE. But as yeah. we know, that's more of an of an entertainment thing. But yeah, man, I remember when I found out it was fixed. <laughs> when Damn. it's fake, yeah. Ref- WWE's uh, it's fake. What? What? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I was like, huh? Why is why is John Cena winning every every fucking match? match? He's just that good. In jorts. <laughs> no, but John Cena's a god though. No, he is. I love John Cena. So. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's the scandal. The scandal of 07. I'll tell my kids about it. You probably, yeah, I, yeah. I still haven't recovered from it. It's been 17 years. <laughs> so I can't tell if you're... Are you doing a bit? No. I had, <laughs> no, I have not recovered from it. It's been 17 years. It still bothers me, obviously. This was the first thing that came to mind. I knew I was doing this. The minute you said sports scam, yeah. I was like, yep. <laughs> I know you we're doing it got it I'll go off the top I, I don't even need notes I lived it brother I lived it though I witnessed it I saw I was watching the game me and my dad could not I wish I could show you some of the fucked up shit they were doing Stoudemire was going up for dunks getting smacked in the face and the hands and the dick and the ass and they were just like I don't see nothing Tim Duncan would someone someone would blink at him they'd be like, and, <laughs> like what what the fuck Bell? on what Unnecessary eye contact. <laughs> like, what <laughs> the fuck is this, bro? It's the Twilight Zone. It pissed me the fuck off. I'm telling you. If you're a Suns fan out there, if you're a fucking sports fan, you have to know about that corruption, man. It's just, it was. I'm interested if my if my cousin remembers it because he was a big Suns fan during that that era too. Call him up. <laughs> just kidding. Right now. <laughs> just at twelve o'clock at night. <laughs> Hello, what the fuck, Angel? You good? Hey, you remember hey, 07? Hey, hey, you remember 07, bro? When we, were, when we were when we were playing, this was before. 2K was 2K. What was it? Was it just the NBA? Yeah, it, was, it was 2K. It was 2K? Yeah, it's 2K. 2K07? That was the thing? 2K started in 2000. That's why it's 2K. <laughs> <laughs> Clip that has one of the angel genius moments. Uh, uh, you're playing 4D chess right now, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that was my scandal, bro. I uh, Like I said, I lived it. I felt it. I hate it. Tragic sports scandal aside. Yeah. I'm Personal sure, sports vendettas aside. I'm sure in those moments, you almost felt as though like you wanted to die, right? Instead of just witnessing what you were witnessing. Made a bit, maybe a bit extreme, but that leads me to ask you a question. How often do you think about your funeral? Um, My physical funeral or the thought of me dying? Though your physical... Well, I guess both. Since you brought it up, um, I don't, I, I don't want to be morbid and say a lot, a lot, but I think more than the average person should. I, I, I would yeah. go as far as to say is that I think about it a, a lot. lot. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's sometimes I don't know why though. Not in a, not always in a depress, in a depressive state. Yeah. A lot of the time is just the, the, the curiosity of death itself. 
and or the logistics and the logistics of like who what happens to my apartment after i die what happens to like who who who's gonna show up to my funeral like or who's gonna show up to anything that happens to do with me you know okay if you if you were to die right now uh-huh. how how would you want your funeral to go uh well first i'm still at odds about being cremated and or buried I oh, kind I kind of want a little bit of both. I I've, I've spoken about that. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna see how that goes. Uh, realistically, let's just say let's just say I was cremated, right? Let's say let's say I, I keep that going, and we have some type of, you know, reception uh, reception. No recital. Re- no. Let's just say we have some type of event for it, right? Not necessarily a funeral, <laughs> casket funeral, but let's say we have like an event for it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I personally want my friends to not, although it's going to suck, I don't want my friends to, to, I don't want it to be like a super sad thing. Like I want it to be a celebration of my life, uh-huh. not, not a mourning of my death. Uh, best case scenario, I know it sounds co- like kind of corny and stuff. I just want... I want it to be more of a, a a cheerful event, even though it's in the face of death. But I just realistically see it being a going away party for me. That's how I see it. To sum it up, would you leave anybody in charge of that to make sure it all goes according to plan? I have always told myself that I'm going. I need to start a rough draft of yeah. instructions that I would leave to my close uh, friends and family. Yeah, and I would like these things at least as as best as, as best. As you can mm-hmm. want it down to a T, you know. You want to? You wanna, I want. You, I want them to push a T. Okay. okay. Fuck push a P, pushing a P, you yeah. know. Push so, you. Yeah. Put. Yeah. Don't push me, you know. <laughs> so, why do you ask? Cause I was having this conversation the other day, and that really got me thinking. And can I just break down to you what my not even fantasy, but what I would want my funeral to go like? Yeah. So. Essentially, very similar to yours. I want it to be a celebration mm-hmm. of the person that I used to be, what I used to carry, everything that I embodied. Embodied, yeah. basically. I want to have my own playlist playing yeah, yeah. and curated and stuff. Yeah. My best friend, if he is still alive, which is kind of likely, uh, like be, uh, after I die, he's then, he, then you know he's in charge of that. It's not you. It, <laughs> it's fucked up. I'm not coming. <laughs> I'm gonna record I'm gonna, on that day. I'm gonna, record, I'm gonna live stream. You lied about your podcast. You lied about your death. Imagine, you bro. Know, you know it's not illegal to fake your death. Are you really? It's not illegal to fake your death as long as you are not doing it for illegal means, like avoiding debt or avoiding the law. Mm-hmm. If you just, if Angel just wanted to be someone else, you can fake your death, disappear, and if they did find you, it's not illegal. The more you know. It's not illegal. But basically, I would have everybody, you know, d- doing what they do as best, you know, sticking to the script as best they can. Right? Yeah. And then, Matt, here's where it gets interesting. I don't know if, like you said, I don't know if I want to be cremated or if I want, like, an open casket or anything. Mm-hmm. Whatever the case is, right? Yeah. There's going to be a certain amount of people that are going to be given an envelope. Okay. Right? And this okay. envelope is going to hold, like, think of it like a golden ticket-esque. <laughs> okay. And they're going to be invited to this special room or whatever, right? And my body is going to be either, like, rolled in there or, like, my dust is going to be spread out. Wh- wh- uh-huh. Whatever, right? And then, basically, they're going to have to play the game of Angel's Murder Mystery. Ah, that I will, I will plan it out, oh and whoever fucking wins the game and solves it, everything is gonna be the person that gets, gets every your, gets, gets your everything. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna start curating this from now until yeah. into, until okay. the day I die. Okay. And it's only gonna be the the people that are, that are closest to me that yeah. are in my will. They're gonna play for all the riches. I'm gonna Dang. take one out of Mr. Beast and have you know. Just that. Interesting. But I feel like it'd be so fucking fun. See, I, I, I didn't go that crazy with it. I wanted, <laughs> I, what I was going to do is I was going to give all my personal login information to one person, and I wanted them to continue to tweet from my account. That, that'd not be even, even crazier not even, not for even when we make it. it. Yeah, not even acknowledge it. I wanted them to just come in and tweet, and I will leave a list of things, thoughts that I might say that you can tweet for situations. You know you can schedule tweets. And yeah, maybe. you can do stuff like that. 
Yeah. Ah, that's, that's that's too much. I just you, want someone to do it. You want like the person to touch yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I want someone to be able to reply and not be a bot. Oh, okay. You know? Are you, is it going to be known to the public that you are dead at this point? Like they will know I'm dead. They won't know. Well, they're going to know about this now. But they 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 weren't going to know that someone was going to have that. Ah. Uh, yeah. So when I die, don't unfollow me because I will be back. <laughs> <laughs> just say PSA, you know. <laughs> so just, you know, keep, 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 hold tight, hold tight. Plus, I have thousands. I have four thousand meme reactions in my phone. Use those. You know what's crazy? How is AI gonna look for when the time that we die? Because AI is crazy now. From yeah. when it started, yeah. Like technically, with all the amount of media that we have out there with our voice and everything people can go out there and make like whole ai things about us right now if no they, they really, could yeah if they really wanted if to they really wanted to they really wanted to did you see the thing i sent you on instagram the j cole thing no nah. <laughs> it's should, ai should i look at it right now yeah, you want to look at it right now i can look at it right it's, now it's ai like it's a it's a little a it's ai infused i mean the one you just sent me as we we're gonna start to record yeah when we were in there. <laughs> let me just <laughs> oh, that makes me so uncomfortable. How do I show the this? How do I show what's happening? It'll be on your screen, killing a bug. <laughs> that is that is bothering me, dude. I knew it would bother you. Oh my god, God. Yeah. So anyway, I'm I don't gonna know. make it. I'm gonna make an AI of you doing that. Yeah. I don't even want to. I don't even want to pretend to try to do it. All right, Angel. One of my closing things that I want that I want to show you, just real quick, right? Uh, we can't. It wouldn't be the amateur. It wouldn't be the amateur hour without mentioning Kendrick and or Drake at this point. So it's like every week we're doing just it. every week for the last month. <laughs> um, so there's a song just dropped today. You, you, I just showed you the the grippy, right? Yeah, you yeah. did. Somehow, somehow, Drake saw that song from j cole and said let me make one worse let's get into it reminds me of you a little bit what <laughs> walk guandalila guandalila no i'm late because there's bad traffic i just showed my dog your grammy said he knows a man i slapped it i'm so cheesed your madam was a night's are geek I'm bent low key. No. I'm bent low key. Walk on the line. No, 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 no. This is AI. This is AI. No. I, I wish it was AI. No. I wish it was AI. No. It's not AI. It's not. What did Kendrick do to this man? He jaw ruled him. No, I kind of want to. It's like a car crash. I kind of want to just keep listening listen to, to it. it. Listen to it. Well, date me if you like me. Brought my cronum for your bestie. Sorry, he's wearing a shiesty. He's not be. It's just too smoky in these streets. You're looking sweet. Oh, don't you be acting me. No, there's a 40 in my jeans. I like you. I know oh, you shorty. Oh my god. I, I like I like your I like your cover better than this one. Your cover was better than this one. And it was about pegging. For the, for those of you that don't know that need a little bit of context, I jokingly made a cover of of the Hey There Delilah song. Yeah. And somehow it sounds better than that other one. Last night you said you know we should go get the look. Hey there, Delilah. I haven't heard this since the last really time, bro. Excited, but as soon as Mr. B came out, I clenched up and feel fried and holy shit. Oh, don't want you inside me. Dude, it hurts my ears. It hurts my fucking ears. Jesus Christ. What is Drake's 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 is better than his. Drake's is better than the dude. Who the fuck this? Snow Day? Is that his name? Barely. Bare but Barely. Oh, what is happening? <laughs> what they have to be memeing, bro. Like they Tell me you cheesing, fam. He's he's he said cheesing in Yeah. Yeah. This is this is a Toronto thing. Bro. Like they're they're doing a to like Wan Guan Delilah. <laughs> 
I don't even. I, I don't what what, I don't what else know. do you say, bro? I don't know. I just wanted to get your initial reaction w- w- on that. What did what, what did Kendrick do to both Cole and Drake? He mm. broke. He broke. He broke him. Great beat. Yeah. <laughs> cheesing. Uh, tell me you cheesing, fam. <laughs> oh shit. All right, Matt. Just just to end us off with yeah. a little bit of less depressing news somehow. Um, do you remember last week when I told you about the whole Chipotle debacle, right? Oh, yeah. You have an update on that? Yes. Guess what? Uh-oh. What happened? Chipotle responded. Ah, what did the they say? C-E- the CEO okay. of Chipotle, yeah. Brian Nicole, mm-hmm. went on Mad Money, Okay. a famously right-wing you know, space, mm-hmm. to discuss the TikTok trend. As they framed it. So mm. let's go ahead and watch this a little, uh, j- just real quick. Yeah. The whole thing is kind of crazy to me. It is. Um, we've always said we want to give people great portions. We want to give them what they want. Uh, and our and team you members. Shrunk. You've not shrunk the portions. No, no. We never have. Like, from the beginning of time with Chipotle, I think there were billboards that said burritos as big as your head. Like, that's <laughs> never changed. Uh, and our teams, they are focused on giving people what they want. Um, so the whole thing's a little silly. It, it- just real quick. Why do all these motherfuckers look like that? Just, just they all look like they cheesy bomb. Just real quick, the fucking goal, the goal that you have to have to yeah. go on national TV right. where everybody can see you and say that nothing has changed, when very clearly <laughs> something's changed. Very, very clearly something has changed. You're not even gonna fucking address that. I, why does he even just blame somebody? Right, like I'd rather him go. Oh, that must have been. It's that must a misunderstanding. Yeah, that must have been down like at a store thing. And you know, we're so sorry. We're unfortunate. We'll make sure that we take the procedures to make sure quality that quality control. Quali- yeah, fuck you. Seriously, but let's continue watching this. Actually, kind of really bums me out when people, frankly, do this videoing thing because it's like it's a little rude to our team members. And you know, our team members, their desire is to give our customer a great experience. Like. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I sh- ah, ah, you have no idea how mad this is like genuinely making me. No, yeah. That's what they want to do. There's nothing better than our team members giving people the bowl or the burrito that they want. And so, you know, hopefully um, that's what people are getting. Uh, I know that's what our teams want to provide. Okay, well, I finished half my chicken out bus store, saved the rest for dinner today. But uh, other people are saying, listen, there's less chicken out bus store. And I say, no, that can't be. It's the same amount. And then I started thinking, maybe if you order out, that, that you're not looking in the eye of the worker and the worker goes, I'm trying to figure yeah. it out, Brian. I, I, I don't know. I mean, if you're in our restaurant in person, you know how this goes, Jim. All you got to do is look at our team member and, you know, if you're like, hey, can I get a little more rice? You, right. you just give him a little nod and more than likely, the guys give you a little more rice. That's absolutely The chicken, true. you know. No, no. that's not. No, 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 no. no. They, they will. They will. They will. But then they're going to add a, an extra $2.99 exactly. for an extra scoop of rice. Exactly. An extra scoop of meat. Right on the nail. Why is that not the thing that's being discussed? The, the infuriating thing about this wasn't the whole video as it's being framed right now. It's the fact that 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 the, t- the, the, the team members, as he stated right there, were specifically instructed to cut down on the goddamn portions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying is that he's totally deflecting and going. He's, 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 he's flipping the blame saying that the, the people filming, which I'm not going to lie. I work in a, I work for a big corporation, so if something was going on and people came in with their phones, and they're fucking sticking them in my face and going, bah, 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 bah. I'm probably it sucks, right? You, nobody wants to go to work and do that. If you're if you're at, if you're at work and you're doing your thing and someone's going, let's see if he's gonna make my fucking drink right. Like it's annoying. I get it, but at the same time, you and I I think are both conscious enough to know the shittiness that these corporations do, right? So it's like. Stop right. doing that. I promise we're doing the right thing. No, and you're not. You're not. And you're only saying that because the, ca- the cameras are on. Yeah. And you're only saying that because the reviews are going down. And your quarterly reviews and your quarterly numbers aren't going to hit the numbers that you want. And now it's an issue. I want to give them a great portion of chicken. I, like you, love the chicken al pastor. Right. Whenever Fantastic. I go into the restaurant, I see people getting great portions. Uh, I see a lot of happy people. Uh, would you ever do it uh, all you can eat like they did the shrimp at uh, Red Lobster? No. We're oh, you don't want to, you don't want to go backwards. We're not going. <laughs> that that's enough of that shit. Um, that was that was basically the the response. Yeah. And I do not know how you could have given a worse response than that. No response would have been better. Yeah. Just ignore it instead of lying to our face because you're lying to us now. 
I actually wanted to go to Chipotle the other day. I don't. That made me not even want to just go. Like I'm just not gonna fuck with them. Jesus, may, maybe this is a little bit more depressing than the whole fucking Drake thing. <laughs> yeah, the Drake thing was actually kind of funny. Shit. No, but um, I. You know what? Fuck it. Like, like I said, you people need to understand. And this is I have always been on this frame of mind that your you know voting seasons coming up, electoral seasons coming up. Your votes, ladies and gentlemen, eh. They don't mean shit. Um, it's taking y'all dumbasses a long, a long time to really start seeing that. But the real, and I'm sorry, I had to take shots because fuck y'all. But, 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 um. Hey, shot of the year. Yeah. You better have a rock like damn punk. Uh, remember? Hey, no, top no, dog, no, you the fuck you no, think no, you play with? No, no, I'm just kidding. Every okay, fucking sorry, week. We need, to, we need to stop. We need right, to stop. We need, we need. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is the best course of action I have always preached this. What is it? The brains? No, yeah, sorry, sorry. Know. I hurt your feelings, you don't want with me no more. Okay. No, the best course of action is literally voting with your money. Corporations yeah. will not make any changes unless their bottom line is affected. So if you really want to make change, stop shopping at these places. If you really want to make change, stop going to fast food restaurants. If you really want animals to be respected, stop buying shit from the places that don't respect these animals. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and unfortunately, it's like everyone. But that's what I'm saying. It's like you're, you, you really want to vote. You think you're doing something when you write – you check mark your fucking trump or your joe biden or your who's the what's whatever you're whatever for. whoever you're voting for kanye you think you're making a fucking difference and you're not but you're contributing to this bullshit right here <sighs> loaded one loaded one for sure we don't need to band together and go leave even more bad reviews on the chipotle thing because there's only one way that there's going to be change and we got to make an example of somebody I, I'm, I'm quite frankly tired of these companies just trying to take advantage of us. The greed is through the fucking roof. It is about time that we start taking some shit back. Yeah, you know what? I'm tired of that. So, in protest, with code AMATUR20, you can get 10% <laughs> off your, your next Chipotle <laughs> order. <laughs> I sincerely hope that we don't get to a point where like that's going to be taken out of context. I really hope that... That's not gonna make it. Chipotle's <laughs> gonna come to us and be like, We had a perfect deal for y'all, but y- we went back, <laughs> we went back and saw you were judging us. Take that shit back. Well, no, 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 please, 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 please. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't mean it. It was no, 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 GTA, the chicken out bus store. G- GTA RP. GTA RP. Every time I go into Chipotle, I see nothing but full portions and happy faces. You're the fucking CEO, bro. What the fuck do you yeah, expect? Yeah, that's why I, I, hate, I hate people like that. I hate, I hate people of power walking in the room and going, Wow. Everyone was tip top, and it's like, yeah, bitch, we know you were coming. You're not. We are not being authentic to exactly. No, like, fuck you. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed episode 41 of the Amateur Hour podcast. If you guys want more of us, click right here where Matt's at. There's a plenty of more reactions that we have. If you want even more podcasts, click over here. We have a whole library of them. Before we leave, you want to add anything for these folks, Matt? Um, like I said, vote with your money. Fuck sports gambling when it comes to referees. Sport, fuck sports gambling in general. Like, you know, if you need help, there'll be a number right here. But no, I, other than that, thank you guys for just all the love, support, likes, comments, subscribes, even the hate. We appreciate it. Um, and just like I said, thank you guys. We will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Is it so satisfying to do that white boy voice? It just takes some time. Little girl, you're in the middle of the ride. Everything, everything, I'll be just fine. Everything, everything, I'll be just fine.